instead of sending out the bat signal, you sent out the rap signal. Y'all know what it is. Is Nitalic going live on YouTube? Who else off the gutter survive like we do? It is what it is, and it's all it's gonna be. So go and bring your talent to send it to this seat. Blue Rabbit, see low beast, the guy heat. We live every night, tune me in and take a seat. All we doing is looking for talent. If that's a challenge, sing, rap, bring that. It's all about a balance. Comedians gotta be funny. Had me laughing and gasping and holding my tummy. At last, we can pass them and get to the money. Nobody wanna be broke though. Looking bummy. It's in the road, finna go viral. Let me make sure I tune in wherever I go Thanks to the internet you can hear in Chicago Overseas, all the G's, they can feel me That's right, y'all This shit is Nick Tallard on YouTube Hosted by Blue Rag Miss C-Note and Steve O'B Bring your talent, y'all Music Review Mondays Talent Turn Up Tuesday Greatness on Display Wednesday Push the line of respect on Thursday. Singers, rappers, beaters, anything you do. Don't forget Instagram and Facebook too. DJ Slim, y'all. Signing out. This shit's this talent. What up, what up? All right. Uh... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome to the Shiznit Talent TV. And we have Maurice Darnell Ager in the house. Yeah. Former professional basketball player, professional <laughs> producer, Grammy nominated. Yeah, so, you know, you wear a lot of hats. So introduce yourself. Uh, and, uh, yeah, introduce yourself and tell everybody a little bit about yourself. What's up, y'all, man? My hey. name is Mo Ager from Detroit, Michigan. And um, first and foremost, man, thanks for having me on the show, man. It's a pleasure being oh, here. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's an honor. It's a um, pleasure. Oh, certainly. But yeah, um, yeah, I've been doing my thing for a while, man. You know, I went to Michigan State University, played four years in the NBA, was a um, you know, college all American as well. And um, yeah, I've been doing music since I was a, a young boy. So uh I'm actually doing music pretty much full time nowadays, um, along with you know, my merchandise line that I just released um this year and um and a few other things, man. But for the most part, man, yeah, I'm just uh, you know, entrepreneur, independent person, you know, doing this thing, man, out here trying to make things happen for myself, man. Um, what Where was you your at? most... I'm Go ahead. Go what ahead. was your most memorable uh, moment? Is it Was it being not Grammy nominated or was it basketball? Was it college basketball? Which one was your most memorable moment? Man, you know what? Uh, you know, that's funny you asked me that. I would have to say... Um, I had to go back to like you know the youth days, man. You know, I feel like basketball was was great um, itself, but I feel like once uh you know the business started to kind of get involved, like it, it kind of yeah. took away a lot of the um the fun for me because it was like oh. uh, nobody really taught me that you know coming up. You know, what I'm saying when you're like 15, 16 yeah. years old, you playing AAU basketball, you traveling, you know, what I'm saying all you really want to do is get recruited for by big colleges, and uh, it became more of a um a business, you know, in my teens. So uh, yeah. I would say, you know, definitely when I was younger, man, just working on my game in the parks, you know what I'm saying? You know, skipping school, playing basketball with the homies mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But um, if you want to speak in terms of like just um, as far as a professional level, I would definitely say like definitely the final four run. Final was four. State. That was actually wow. pretty lit, man. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, that, that was lit. You know what I'm saying? And, and as far as like uh, being nominated for a Grammy, man, I was like, it had, it had its own feelings. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you know, wanting to make it to the NBA was something that I, you know, desired since I was a kid. So when that actually happened, man, I was like, you know, that was that was a super dream come true. It changed my life. It changed my, my family's life. And um, 
and it was a great segue into life period but um you know music was always my love so whenever uh when that happened you know that was a whole different level for me bro like so um i appreciate both of them you know what i'm saying for what they are but overall man you know i would say my most memorable times in, in sports is definitely when i was a kid man those those times was, was unmatched wow so so how long have you been playing since uh junior high school or elementary man i started playing basketball when i was like shit, like seven eight years old wow uh, right the, you know in detroit uh, on the west side of detroit man you know we was playing basketball outside football all that shit man anything that we can actually uh get our hands on at that time you know so you know we used to build crates in the alleys you know <laughs> exactly what that is, you know. So we built a crazy me in the backyard, whooping, you know, sound rocks yeah. and shit like that. So it was, it was cool. It was a good look. Yeah, that, that's how y'all did it in the day. That's, yeah, that's how we had to do it until we was able to find yeah. something official. You know what I'm saying? That's all we knew. But hey, once again, I'm looking back, man. That was like some of the most dopest moments. You know what I'm saying? Our imagination was crazy. So when did you um? get into music like when did you desire to get into music man yeah, that was just in my blood that's something i grew up with you know what i'm saying my dad oh. you know he did his thing in bands my mom she did her thing in music groups around the city um i tell the story sometimes but um you know she actually turned down a deal with motown when wow. she was um, before she had me actually and, um Ooh. yeah it was actually she, i believe she was pregnant with me let me saying, and uh she just turned it down for whatever reason, and I'm you no, know, I'm kind of glad she did. You know, what I'm saying? Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Considering you know some of the things we learned about the industry moving forward, but um, yeah, you know, she put the keyboard in front of my face when I was like five. You know what I'm saying? So I started rapping when I was like six. I was in a Glee club when I was in like the third grade. So you mm -hmm. know, music was always just you know that was just something that was in me, bro. It wasn't even like a um, I can't even say it's something I picked up. It was just something. I was born with, you know. Wow, yeah, in your blood. So, what do you play instruments? Because you said you she had she gave you a keyboard. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's my birthday today. So. Oh, oh, happy, happy birthday! birthday. Yeah, thank you for that. sharing wow. your birthday with us. Wow. Blessings, birthday. my brother. Blessings. Thank you. Happy birthday, Mr. Edgar. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Man. You know, I live at home. Thank I live you. Wow. Happy birthday, birthday man. With wow. us. <laughs> thank you so much, my brother. It's a plum, pleasing pleasure to have you on the show and you sharing your time with us, man. Wow. Uh, how about yeah. that? That's how God works, man, in mysterious ways. You know what I mean? But mighty ways. Uh, I, I know you know, you out in Thailand, right? Am I am I correct? No, nah, uh, Vietnam. Vietnam. Vietnam, wow, okay, Vietnam. So you check it all the way in from Vietnam, man. Thumbs up to you, man. Love that. I love that. So you uh, you, you got a school out there? What are you actually doing in in, in Thailand? I mean, yeah, yeah, uh, I Vietnam. Have I have a um basketball pro program called the Moyga Hoop School. You know, I started that in 2013. It's a basketball youth youth and um youth youth enrichment program. I actually started when I was living in L.A. and um. You know, um, yeah, I did my thing out there for years. You know, Long Beach, um, South Central, shit, uh, San Pedro, uh, all the way out to the suburbs, Thousand, Thousand Oaks, you know, Calabasas, Laguna Beach, Huntington Beach. You know, so I, I was pretty, I was pretty much balanced out there. You know, I did it pretty much all over the country as well. You know, in different mm -hmm. different states. You know, I would have um, different camps and clinics and stuff like that. Did a lot of charity work with it. Along with, um, it was actually for profit too, but you know, I also, you know, did a lot of free things, you know, just for uh, underprivileged mm -hmm. communities, of course. Wow. And, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was my thing right there. And um, I'm still doing my thing out here now. You know what I'm saying? So I have, um, yeah. I do private classes. You know, I do, um, I do, I do, um, sorry, um, classes at inter international schools. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's more of a hoop already. And um, you yeah, know, we we will take that everywhere with us. You know, I, before the pandemic, you know, I was all over the place, man. I was in China with it, Thailand, um, shit, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and uh, mm. then COVID hit. I was, it was a wrap for that for a while. Wow. So, you yeah. know, uh, I pretty much maneuvered everything I was doing to you know digital, you know, and uh, and I've just been um, basically removing maneuvering myself into that space ever since. And uh, yeah, mm. it's a process, and I'm building it up, but uh, nonetheless, man. Um, I enjoy the digital space even more than the actual 
um, <clears throat> running around all over the damn world, man, because, you know, eventually mm -hmm. that starts to wear on you, man, and you just want to be able to uh, cover as much ground as possible without utilizing all your goddamn energy just to, you know, make mm -hmm. things happen. Mm -hmm. But the internet is allowing us to do that, just like us being here right now, you know what I'm saying, building doing our thing, man. Uh, what was that say? The shiznit? Shiznit, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, 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 went out a little. Thanks to Don. Salute you. Peace, love, and respect to Don Lopez for plugging Thank this all in. Yeah, she's absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I don't her. She, she's okay. one of the person that I haven't even met her in person, but she's been like super supportive from a long, from a, from afar. And I, I'm always appreciative of um, Don, man. She's super, man. She's always doing her thing, man. And I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, you was mentioning that you sent us a beat. We actually thought we could get you to do us a, uh, a The Shears Net Talent TV drop on that beat, yeah. but you sent the beat. So we're going to rap on it now. <laughs> we're going to send yeah. it back to you I mean, us on it. Yeah, for sure, man. It's whatever. I, it's funny because um, yeah, Don actually sent me a message, and I feel like I read it wrong. But I know I made a beat called Shizzin. It was like the um, I sampled the old Snoop Dogg joint. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah. So it was like um, yeah, whatever you need, man. If I you know throw a drop on there, man. That's cool. I got you. Oh, for sure, what? man. That'll be appreciated, man. That's that's highly that's highly favorite from God, y'all. Yes, <laughs> I love that, man. That's that's nice. Nice. Wow. So the, what time who's... is it? I'm sorry. Sorry about that. I was, I was just gonna out. ask him what time what? it was what? out there. Uh, it's 10, 10 a.m. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, it's a good. It's, it's Thursday. It's th Thursday. It's throwback Thursday. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, wow. mm -hmm. Yeah, this is pushing the line uh, of respect Thursdays. We pay homage to legends such as yourself. You know, you've been in the game, you know, playing your ball. You know what I mean? Now you music. You Are you in the films and uh, stuff of that nature, too? Movies, uh, films? I'm actually, you know, help yeah, I've, I've done I've done my thing, you know, living in L.A., you know, I you know, I was always in the mix, you know, doing different shows, commercials, you know, um, I've done music, you know, BET, uh, NBC Sports, um, uh, different movies and stuff like that along those lines. Right now, I'm actually working with my dog, Wynn Sartin, on one of his projects, and um, I'm actually producing some of the music on there, you know, doing some scoring. But uh, yeah, 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 I'm definitely tapped in in any way I can, you know, musically, uh, or um, Especially, you know, I would love to be able to get more into like you know films and um, production along those lines. So yeah, that's 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 the that's the goal overall. You know, what I'm saying to get these mu this music and, and TV and film consistent. You did that's right. That's right. Consistently, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Stilo, you got a question for him? Oh yeah, I was gonna just say, uh, since you're in Vietnam, that's the newest place for you to put in the uh, the hoop school program you got going on. Yeah, 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 right here, Vietnam. Um, yep. it says yeah, that yeah. You, know, you got it everywhere. On, um, of course, in America, Canada, Spain, and now you took it to Vietnam, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've covered a lot of ground. Um, you know, I used to have a program where we, you know, fly out to different countries and do like two day clinics. And like I said, that was before COVID. So, um, you know, uh, I had to kind of switch up my my structure. You know, from that point. So right now, I just do like you know, we got privates, private classes and stuff. We do. Well, that's a blessing. Yeah. You work. Yeah. Uh, did you work with uh, one of the bo Bone Thugs and Harmony, Lazy Bone? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, shout out to my guy Major Williams. Uh, he's doing his thing out there in LA. <clears throat> uh, he set up a track you know, with him on it. It was featuring Lazy Bone, which was actually a dream come true for me, man, because I was the biggest. Bone Thugs and Harmony fan in middle school, and Lazy Bone was always my favorite artist for sure. And um, wow. so you know, working with Lazy and beat me and him was like, man, that was that was that was a memorable moment for me. You know what I'm saying? Like wow. to meet him and then him having kind of a certain respect for me, like he knew who I was from basketball. So I was like, damn, it, it was kind of dope. I feel like that was some of the coolest stuff in LA. You know, when I was living out there, you know, because um, you know, you heard the phrase, man, every hooper want to rap, every rapper want to hoop. So it's like whenever mm. I go when I when I first moved out there in like 2011, I would start you know moving around doing different things. Shout out to my dude TD, um, you know he was working with the game and stuff like that. So he was able to kind of move me in different situations, you know. So I was able to meet the game and stuff like that, and um, and rock out with these guys. So um, it was cool that these guys actually knew me. So it was kind of like 
you know, then, you know, meeting Dr. Dre, you know, being in the studio with him and doing some things, Big Sean, you know, the list goes on, but, um, yeah. but Lazy Bone was definitely like one of the, one of the ones he actually came to my studio. So that was even better, you know? Yeah. That's super dope. Are, are there any other, um, known rappers that you worked with? Did you rap on a song with them? Did you get the chance to produce any music? Yeah. Um, yeah. E40, um, Royce to five nine. Uh, I got a I actually got an unreleased track with um, Be Real Be Real from Cypress Hill. I haven't released it yet. I mean, I'm, I don't even know what I'm waiting on, but I, I guess I will one day. Um, uh, <laughs> I produce. That's familiar with Toby Nwige. Yes. Yeah, I produced yes. his first two albums. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my guy. Uh, still my guy. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying? But it's good to see him doing his thing. He's actually flourishing. Like you know. More than even I thought he would, you know what I'm saying? He's actually a mega star at this point. So, you no know, salutes to him, man. I'm very, very um, proud to have been there, you know, at a very, uh, I would say the starting point of his career. And, um, yeah, he's doing his thing. Uh, Eric Thomas, the hip hop creature, you know, I've produced on his albums. Um, who else? Uh, you knew a guy by the name of Rockbox out Rock of Long Box. Beach. Yeah, he, uh, yeah. He, he, shouted, he shouted you out. He said, What's up? And uh, he's definitely trying to connect with you again. Yeah, I produce. I, I produce. Uh, I want to say two or three records for Rockbox. Oh, okay, man, it's, it's a lot, man. It's, it's crazy. You mentioned Rockbox. I haven't heard that name in over ten years. Wow! <laughs> so it's like, wow! You, you produce a yeah, track yeah. on that album. Are you guys, called- where you guys at? Um, we we in L.A. 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 Yeah, mm-hmm. by yeah, way of Compton. Yeah. Long Beach. I'm in the valley right now. All right. Mm-hmm. We're in here. Nah, I did my thing. LA. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rockbox, he did shot you out, though. He said, uh, yeah, he did some of my first work when you was out here in L.A. And that's a great thing because, you know, this thing is coming full circle. He was able to grace the stage over here as well. But I do got to say this. It's Thursday where you are. It's Wednesday right here. Yeah. And this is Greatness on Display Wednesday, man. It's an honor to have right. you on Greatness on Display, man. You know what I'm saying? Wow, this is amazing, so man. Much. I had to correct that because the people that's watching that's here know that today is Wednesday. So I got to make sure <laughs> that they did the LOL on me, like laugh out loud. Today is Wednesday. <laughs> but when I heard you say right. Thursday, it threw me to, you know, like, wow, we on Thursday. Okay, but no. Nah. It's all love, man. Uh, we Wednesday over here. It's greatness on display, man. And uh, you absolutely, uh, it's great, man. I, I can see the greatness that you have already laid down and gonna continue to lay down, especially with doing your, like your school and stuff of that nature. Do you have a, a curriculum with that? Definitely, definitely. It, it all depends on the age too. You know what I'm saying? If it's the um the, the younger groups, you know what I'm saying? We're, we're you know we, obviously we start them out for basic stuff, but um for the most part, yeah, I definitely have a curriculum. Um. And uh, yeah, it's, it's it's extensive, you know. But once again, you know, out here in, in Vietnam, man, the basketball is is pretty much it's still grassroots. So I haven't really, mm. you know, had to get him to my bag too much, you know. But um, I got you. uh, you know, I, I coach a professional team out here as well. Um, it's called the Illinois mm. Buffaloes. They have a league out here called the, um, the VBA, you know, Vietnam Basketball Association. Uh, we lost in the finals, you know, this past season. So um, that was actually a good experience. So I was actually able to, you know, implement a lot more with, with these guys. You know, um, you know, we had two American players on our team, and the rest was Vietnam players. And um, yeah, we got we got popped in the playoffs in um in the finals. Actually, <laughs> you know, we, That's we, right. It got us out of there. But, uh, it was cool. but you made it to the playoffs. We made it to the finals. You did. Well, you made it to the finals. That's pretty yeah. dope. Yeah. What what That's inspired you? Phenomenal. Yeah, what inspired you to start the um school? Um, school. man, this happened in 2013. I was talking to one of my um one of my mentors at the time. Um, and she told me she was like, uh, "Why don't you just start your own thing?" Because at this point in time, I was still trying to move around. You know, uh, I was doing speaking too. You know, I, I did speaking for maybe you know five six years. I was on the speaking circuit, so I was always looking for opportunities to go speak to the youth and this that and other. And um, it was a point in time when nobody was actually, you know pulling for me, you know, or checking or trying to bring me on. I don't know. I'm, just, I'm sitting in myself. It's like, hey, and she's like, you need to just do your own thing. And then from there, I was like, yeah, you're absolutely correct. And like I said, I've always been one of those independent type people, you know what I'm saying? So if I couldn't get my 
foot in the door, you know what I'm saying? I created that mob, you know what I'm saying? So even mm -hmm. with music, I started my own music production company in 2010, my last year in the NBA. And um, you know, I've been pretty much pretty much creating my own situations, you dig, and, and just going from wow, there. That's, you know, that's pretty much did you, did, did, you just, did you just retire or you, you left the game because of injury or something of that, that nature? Nah, nah, nah. I left I left to go on my journey. I love to go on my journey. That's you know, um, my last year, 2010, 2011, played five years professionally. Um, like I said, there's a lot of things that, you know, um, that I experienced that pushed me to, you know, make, you know, bigger decisions for myself. You did. Um, I feel like for years, you know, I was playing basketball. You know, it, it, like I said, you start to lose a bit, bit of the joy when you feel like everybody is kind of got their hand in it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, damn, am I yeah. even doing this for myself? I feel like more people are trying to control me and I, you know, and I'm not big on people trying to control me. And that, it was like, uh, that was just one thing, you know what I'm saying? But you know, that's when I went on my journey. So it had nothing to do with injuries. You know, I was actually, okay, beautiful. You know, that's yeah, good. Yeah, that's yeah. good. I was, I was having a pretty good, pretty good run. I was really, well, I was 20, 26, 27 years old. So I was still pretty young. So, wow. Um, so yeah, you, you entered the, um, the, the dunking contest as well too, right? Yeah, that was the college dunk contest, NCAA. Wow. Now, yeah. how high do you jump? How high do you actually jump and get off the ground? Do they do they measure that? Right now? Oh, oh, you oh, talking about back then or now? Like, I yeah, yeah, well, still. now. <laughs> I you still, still jumping still, off the ground? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I can dunk. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, right. back then, I think my own. <laughs> I think I had like a um, running vertical vert at like between 42 inches and like 46 or something like that. You know what I'm saying? In college, I think it was like 46 off the one and a half. Mm. And it was like 42 off the two feet. Yeah, so wow. I still got some bounce, man. Still That's right. That's bounce. greatness, man. <laughs> yeah, wow. wow. Absolutely amazing. Uh, um, how do you handle uh, criticism and how does it help you in, uh, to grow as an artist and producer? Um, sometimes the, the sometimes the worst and the best criticism is silence. You know, um, it's times where I put out stuff and nobody don't say nothing, and um, I don't know what, how to take it at times. So it's just like I take it as people ain't fucking with it. So I I, I tend to just it pushes me to get better. It's almost like mm -hmm. I create. Y'all you know, remember when Michael Jordan said in the documentary, you know, saying where he used certain things to motivate him, even if it's not true. Mm. And that's kind of how at, at times it's like. Um, I put stuff out even to this day and I might not necessarily get a response. And, um, you know, as an artist, you go through many things mentally. But for me, I always end up, I still keep creating. I still keep doing things, you know what I'm saying, that, that push me. Because in the end, it's all about me improving. And if I think it's dope, that's the only thing that matters. But as far as criticism, yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah, I'm used to being criticized. You know what I'm saying? We play sports, bro. You, you kind of get used to having to respond to criticism in certain ways. And uh, for me, I just use it to elevate myself. Absolutely. That's magic. That's magic right there. Man, motivate yeah. yourself, man. Don't, yeah, don't stay in the stupor if it ever happens, you know. Absolutely. You got a question, Stilo? I was going to say, what motivated you to do the uh, your first debut album and why did you name it Motown? Uh, I was actually living in Africa at that time, man. My girlfriend at the time, she was, yeah, yeah, she was working on a film called Mad Max in Africa. And I went out there for I think a little over a month. And uh, I always wanted to make an album called Motown just because just to play off the words. You know, it actually played off of, you know, the situation where my mom didn't actually move, you know, move with that situation with Barry Gordy. And I felt like, you know, that was just something that was always with me. And um, I, the, the main thing that inspired me is the fact that um, I started rapping initially right and um i started making beats when i was like 17 years old but it got to a point where it's like um you know i was rapping at the time and i just couldn't find beats you know i was actually taking old tapes and stuff like that and like you know you remember when uh, artists used to have like the last maybe 20 seconds open with no with no lyrics um, you know the good old days and stuff like that so i would take that and loop that a hundred times you know what i'm saying just to create a beat and then i was like man this is getting too strenuous so um I just started making beats myself. And then and then um I, you know, I took producing serious for, for years and then I finally got back into rapping when I was like maybe 27, 28. But um, you know, at that time I was ready to just, you know, 
tell a story all the way up until that point. You know, that's what Motown is. And Motown was actually something that kind of pulled me into this point because Motown was definitely about the journey, you know what I'm saying? And, and being, you know, mm. on a journey for both spiritually and physically, you know? Wow. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, Can we keep us? God first over here, my brother. And yeah, so you you on the blessed show, you understand me? So I, I like what you said that both spiritually and you know physically, you, you you got that. That's beautiful, man. Absolutely greatness on display, ladies and gentlemen, right here on yeah. the Shiz Nick Talent TV. Make sure y'all hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. We're going all the way up. We finna hit the hemisphere, ladies and gentlemen. Get stuck way up there with my man right here, Maurice. Hopefully hey, we get up out this motherfucker. If you if you can uh, collaborate with one artist in the game right now, who would it be? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be honest, man. I don't listen to these people no more, man. Like I, I kind of like kind of, you know, I really don't listen to a lot of current rappers, but if I had to pick somebody, you know, it would probably be like a J. Cole or, um, yeah, J. Cole. That's right. Yeah, J. Cole, J. Cole. <laughs> I Cole. thought the second yeah. was. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of guys I like, you know what I'm saying? I, I feel like there's some guys I, I really like, you know, of course, Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, Big Sean, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, I've always liked T.I. Um, I've always liked, um, it's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Um, but damn, that's crazy. You got me on that one. But uh, yeah, <laughs> if I had to be the first, yeah, it, it, it'd definitely be cold because, you know, I like his consciousness. I like his awareness. I like, you know, what he stands for. I like that he's always, you know, putting the art first. I like that he's not necessarily tapped in on having to look a certain way all the time. You know, it's all about the message with him. Uh, and I, I respect him overall, you know what I'm saying? He a hooper too, so, you know, he, he feel like, I feel like he a person that I can actually w w vibe with, you know what I'm saying? Mm, and, um, gotcha, yeah. You know who's cold, though, I like is um the kid Simba, now that I think about it. Mm. Kid oh, Simba, Simba, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's dope. Yeah, he's dope. I, I like him. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think. Yeah, I mean, if you throw some names out there, I might be able to connect some dots, but <laughs> so what was can you see? Okay, go ahead, Miss Chino. No, tell us about your single "Forever I'm a Spartan." Oh yeah, that was from my um yeah, that was 2010. Um, that was actually my first, I would say my first major project coming out the NBA, or um yeah yeah I would say so. You know, I created a uh, a theme for the football team, and um I got with my boy uh, Crimson the Black. Crimson, the black gentleman. He's from Detroit. He's one of my favorite rap artists of all time. He's still doing his thing. He actually lives out there in California as well. I believe he's doing, a, um, you know, he has a dispensary, something along those lines. Now, I don't want to misquote him, but, yo, know, shout out to my guy. And, um, you know, I sent him the beat. You know, he blessed it. He actually came over with the concept for from a Spartan. And it was a dope concept because it lasted to this day, you know. So we actually followed up with a, uh, a basketball version a couple years ago. It didn't do as, do as well as the football, but... Um, yeah, that was a fun track. You know, it was actually cool to go to the game and actually hear my music on, a, on that big ass stadium. You know what I'm saying? So that was that was a good experience. Yes, sir. Oh, that's pretty dope. Uh, You've done a lot of a lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff. Mm. Yes, you do. How do you uh, come up with your concepts? Oh, shit, that's all spirit, spirit, bro, spirit. Spirit. That's what I need to hear. Exactly. Spirit, you know what I'm yeah. And you know, experience is experience, you know what I'm saying? Like, I I might not do music for a couple months, you know, get out, live, learn, grow, you know what I'm saying? Um, do other things, and then, as you know, the, the music has content, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The ideas, I never know what I'm going to do before I sit down before I make music. <clears throat> it just comes, you know what I'm saying? And I, I go from there, and I don't really question it, you know? And uh, that's the cool part about being, you know, independent. Um, there's not a lot of people around me to tell me, oh, you should do this, you should do that. You know, I, I don't, you know, that, that's not, that's that doesn't necessarily equate to flow for me. You know what I'm saying? So I love being able to just, you know, take an idea. You know, I do house stuff. I do fusion music. I do everything. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that just comes from me being open-minded and allowing the spirit to flow through. 
and uh, yeah, and tap in that way. You know, that's that's kind of how I do all things. You know, I just try to stay in that flow state. That's right. Can you so. can you share any obstacles you had to overcome becoming a producer? Um, you know, obviously the basketball thing. You know, I think that's a huge yeah. one. You know, I feel like you know there's a lot of people that still can't even to this day can't look past the fact that I I play basketball. It's like there's no way you can play basketball and and be good at music. So sometimes people go in with an ear already kind of yeah. um, discredit, you know, what I've done. But then you get a person like the game who was a, a fan of, of my basketball and the things that I did on a hoop court, you know, when I played beats for him, you know, he like, oh yeah, he was already more receptive. You know what I'm saying? Then you have certain people who just kind of like, you know, even to this day, but, um, you know, obstacles currently right now, um, I feel like the current obstacles at this point for me is definitely, you know, um, the social media aspect of things, you know, dealing with the algorithms. I feel like, you know, a lot of yeah. us are dealing with these things right now, you know, just dealing with the algorithms. I believe, um, you know, music itself is oversaturated. Um, yes. I think that, um, you know, finding a, um, a, a, a consistent following on it, or not, I don't, I don't like the word following, but a consistent support group and people who actually dig what I'm doing is, uh, is, is a, I don't want to say it's an obstacle, but it's, it's a journey, you know what I'm saying? And it's something that I'm actively figuring out and trying to learn on my own and, um, you know, doing my way. Because one thing I learned is I can't do nothing nobody else is doing in terms of marketing. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, I've had marketing managers, I've had business managers, and they will always try to just the whole like, OK, you got to do it this way. If you do it this way, it's going to yeah. work. It never works out for me that way. So I had to learn how to I'm learning how to master doing it myself you know what i'm saying i'm like okay this is how i did it you know because everybody got their story on how they was able to you know um you know penetrate and, and get things done and um and actually break through so it, mm -hmm. it just can't be oh yeah well, you do it like this i got i got to look back and be like damn I, I did it my way and it worked yeah. and um you know doing it my way it, it's taking a lot longer but uh nonetheless i'm still at peace i still love creating but once again man as an artist you're always going to have to deal with certain things at each level and right now I'm at the step where I'm just kind of like, you know, um, not getting a lot of, you know, um, recognition, you know, like I said, like, it, it's just, you know, it is what it is, but I'm not afraid of, you know, admitting that I'm at that stage right now and just, mm -hmm. but I'm producing. The I'm break was about to happen. Called Mo House, Mo Ager, Mo Ager Show premieres and uh, it's my favorite album. Mm -hmm. now, that, is that one? Is that the one you're about to drop right now? I mean, in in this year? Yeah, it's, it's already out. I dropped it on Bandcamp. Oh. It's called um, Morgan Show Premieres. And um, yeah, I, I kind of like to call it Ascension Protocol music, man. It's, it's one of those albums where it's like I'm tapping in on the importance of, you know, cleaning up. You know what I'm saying? You know, really unpopular stuff. It's like, you know, I'm like, basically cleaning your spiritual life up, cleaning wow. your physical life up, you know, doing the inner work, um, staying tapped in on your spiritual self. It's 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 different from just actual a spiritual album, but it's like, you know, I'm using real stories to be like, listen, man, I think it's time to get for us to get this shit together, man. I feel like at this point in time in life, if we haven't really tapped in on our spiritual self on this planet, man, we, you know, we're not doing something right. You know, Absolutely. we're losing. Okay. You dig? So I feel like right now, um, that, that's what the album's about, and once again, th that's a that's a major challenge. Knowing that the content that most people are used to and, and have grown themselves to um to like, uh, you know, it's 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 pretty dysfunctional and it's toxic, and um, you know, so I, you know, I have to understand that if I'm putting out something that's actually to the contrary of that, it's going to have its challenges, and mm -hmm. you know, cutting through, you know, in many ways, because you know, Instagram is ran by certain people, and they you know they want a certain they want a certain look, right? They want certain things to keep the algorithm up. And it typically is shit that's destroying us, you know? So right mm -hmm. now I'm, I'm on this purification, purification vibes right now. It's trying to purify. That's yeah. why I came out with a new um, detox program called Baby Fat Water, which is a, a detox program. It's a free program. I put it out for people that actually want to reach out to me. I came up with a, um, a blend. Um, I've been working on blends for years, man. You know, I'm somewhat of a, a baby herbalist. You know, I'm not going to, you know. I, <laughs> That's <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but, you know what I'm saying? I, I came up under Sabi's um, protege. His name is Thurston. He taught me a lot about herbs and stuff like that. So um, for the past six, seven years, I've been working on different blends that, 
that's worked for me in many ways, health wise, to clean me out and to keep me elevated and keep me in the point where I'm, you know what I'm saying, tapped in. So, um, you know, I, I come out with a blend called, it's called Baby Fat Water Daily Detox Cleanser. So, any, mm-hmm. if anybody want to, you know, tap in, tap in with me, I'll give you the ingredients, the recipe, and, um, you know, and you can go from there. Well, mm, I'm definitely going to tap in. Good question. Oh, bless on behalf of my boy Bayleaf, what are your thoughts on Ice Cube's big three? It's fire. You know, um, I've always loved Ice Cube. You know, so Ice Cube was one of my favorite growing up. Still is. Um, I love the fact that he's always going against the grain. I love the fact that he doesn't wait for any corporations. You know, um, though he's not waiting for any major corporations for him to get this thing going because ultimately right. he's going against the system itself. So, um, you know, uh, I love the big three. It gives the old heads opportunity to, you know, get out here and still play, make a little bread and, um, you know, keep them, keep their names out there. Because unfortunately, man, sometimes when you're making transitions in life, um, especially outside of sports, you know, people tend to forget about you. So, uh, you know, the big three is is, is allowing – for some of these guys to keep their name out there so they can continue to, you know, do their thing in life, man. Because life isn't over after we hoop, you know. You know, sometimes they think just because we done playing basketball, we dead or something. So it's like it gives these guys an opportunity to really, you know, promote what they got going. Hopefully they got something going outside of basketball so they can actually, you know, promote that as well, right along with the big three. But I think it's great marketing. I think Ice Cube is a, a, um, a real G for that one, and I appreciate him. You know what I'm saying? Another one is, mm-hmm. would you ever participate? On behalf nah. of Mr. Bailey. <laughs> oh, oh, you're talking about the big three? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you ever participate on that yourself? Nah, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? You know, if, if no, nah, I'm straight. You know, I'm, I'm building over here in, in, in Asia, man. I feel like, um, like I said, like I, I did my thing in America. Not to say I won't come back and do work, but as far as plan, nah, 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 nah. Maybe on the business side of things, you know, there's a, a avenue for me, but, um, I'm good. I mean, I enjoy watching that from afar. That's and right. how would somebody um, uh, contact you? Let people know how to contact you for the baby fat. What did you? What's the water called again? Is it baby fat? Uh, it's called ba- baby, baby fat water. Okay. And and how baby could they contact you? Baby. Oh, uh, they just hit me up on Instagram. Mo Ager. M O E A G E R. It's my Twitter handle, man. I'm sorry, my um, my IG handle. You know what I'm saying? So you can hit me up on there. I'll give them the is that um, your pro- program. And, you know. yeah. No, I'm sorry. No, Is that your producer name as well? If they yep, want to look yep, your music yep. up. Ager. Stage name. Stage name. Yes, sir. Mo Ager. Absolutely. That's everywhere. I got music on Spotify, SoundCloud, Bandcamp, iTunes, everywhere. Everywhere. Uh, can you share a behind the scenes story from any live performance you ever done? Yes, yeah, so I remember at Michigan State, um, 2013, yeah, 2013, the Mo House Motown album was already out, and um, I went back to Michigan State for homecoming, right? Uh, and I got booked to do a show. Uh, wow. and it was a shit, man. It was. Yeah, I was preparing for it for weeks, man. I was really excited about it. I get there, right, and uh, have all my fam drive up, drive up from Detroit, and uh, it was at I want to say it was at a Best Western, Best Western Hughes. You know what I'm saying? But the lobby had like damn near thousands some people, just alumni, just chopping it up, whatever. Mm-hmm. But me, meanwhile, I was doing a show in the ballroom right next door. Like literally, all you have to do is walk from this room to that room. Show mm-hmm. starts at ten. I'm there, you know, I'm getting ready. You know, so I did the mic check and everything. I'm like, all right, cool. This is about to be epic, bro. Like, be able to give back to Michigan State like this and you know, um, really just show another side of me, right? You know what I'm saying? They always knew me for the Hooper as a basketball player. So to show them that I can get on the mic and do my thing, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm waiting for the show to start, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, 10, 15 past, 10, 30, 10, 45, 11 o'clock past, 11, 30. 12 o'clock past, 1230, 12 <laughs> I'm still sitting back here waiting for people to come in. Nobody shows up. Wow. It's one yeah. o'clock. Nobody shows up. Nobody comes in. Nobody. I mean, only people that was there was me, the DJ, and the bartenders. I was way in the back. 
I was talking to them motherfuckers like, hey, yo, y'all hear me? <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, uh, so, um, so did you perform no. still, or did you just you just ended the show, or whatever? Uh, in my in my imagination, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in my mind, no. Nah, so I ended up leaving, man. You know, I ended up getting out of there, man. You know, I was I was a little heated, but I, I mm-hmm. kept cool. You know, and my family, you ended up going to a party somewhere. It was still homecoming, so I wasn't about to, you know, just let it let it completely run the away. Yeah, so, let the night. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. they did me dirty up there, man. You know what I'm saying? So this happened at Michigan State. This is a Friday night. Nobody showed to my show. Michigan State alumni, Mo Ager. Everybody know me. It was a great test for my ego. It was a, it was a, uh, a lesson for my ego, I guess. I'm going to leave it at that because I definitely could have turned up on him. I could have went, like, yo, what's, what's good? And, you know, I could have got at the promoter. Like, yo, what's going on? Like, obviously, there was some moving pieces. Why this thing didn't happen? You know, I took it personal. But I didn't um, – I didn't go crazy, you know. So I went out, had a good time, had a good weekend, and um, Monday night I get back to LA. You know, I did a little charity basketball event with one of my friends, whatever. And uh, my homie LP called me. It was like an evening, like six thirty. I'm coming back. I'm like, what's good, man? He like, yo, you know, you know, one of our songs got nominated for a Grammy, bro. Wow. Like, what song? <laughs> I'm like, I ain't. <laughs> the thing is, you know, we didn't. I didn't submit no song. He's like, yeah, it was submitted. You know what I'm saying? The, the Grammy committee, uh, they actually put it up for consideration. It was actually on the ballot. It didn't make the top five, but it was like on the ballot. You know what I'm saying? It was consideration and, um, yeah. for the best rap, collab- best rap collaboration song. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? It was called Far From Home. And um, I just felt like we're talking about the spirit and how things actually align, man. That was super aligned. But it was, mm-hmm. but it come after being dissed at Michigan State. Then yeah, Monday, I get nominated for a Grammy. You dig what I'm saying? So it was like the polarity shifted so fast for me. So I feel like we talk about good memorable moments. That's a good one for me, man, just because it was like it showed me a lot. It taught me a lot. Handle situations right, right. I don't know if I would have got that grimy situation if I had cussed everybody out. Who knows? Wow, I got you. Yeah. I handled it proper. And, um, and then on Monday night, you know, you know, Grammy now, you know what I'm saying? All in the same two or three day span. So, you know, that's how. Like you said, the most high work in mysterious ways. Yeah. Absolutely. The mighty ways. Yeah. See, but mighty. <laughs> I got a question yeah. that I ask everybody on this show. And that question is, what's your top five most legendary artists here today are already going on home to the father? Uh, any genre of music. And it can be a combination of producer, artists, you know what I mean? Or it could be like a group as one, as an artist, you know, as one okay all right marvin and just gay. tell us a little bit of why you you choose him marvin gay he, he's my favorite artist of all time you know uh, mine spoke me up on him early uh his, mm-hmm. you know his music was i like his music you know he made a lot of dark music and uh, i feel like it was more dark emotional he represented where we, where we was from detroit he, uh, you know he's from dc but you know he lived in detroit as well but i feel like the soulfulness that marvin gay brought you know uh, really connected with me on a different level and um like I said, that Mo, my Mo, Motown connection was huge for me. Earth, Wind, and Fire, because, you know, just wow, one. They, they were one of the first groups or the only groups that I've heard of that came from, like, the, the 70s and stuff like that that didn't have any crazy fallouts, you know what I'm saying? You don't hear no stories about them being on drugs and nothing like that. They was, like, because they was really spiritual, man. You, you could look at it. was tapped in. It was really tapped in on, you know, different things consciously. Wow. Y'all, y'all hear me? Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Earth, Wind, and Fire, for sure. That's yeah, so true. Shout out to Maurice White. Um, his brother passed last month. Um, so, yeah, wow. Earth, Wind, oh, wow. Fire is amazing. Um, wow. Third, um, I would have to go with... Um, I like Bob Marley. Mm. Iconic legend. What he stood for. You know what I'm saying? His music was enjoyable, but yeah, I, I like him. I like him more so what he still for as an artist, you know what I'm saying? And, and some of the things that he, he was trying to produce in the world, and he did it, you know what I'm saying? To this day, I, I mean, I can go somewhere right now and see Bob Marley's face on the wall, you know what I'm saying? Just because he still for a certain frequency of peace, and I think that uh, um, that really connected with people. Um, uh, historically, I, I would have to still say Tupac. I would have to throw Tupac in there. That's right. That's um, right. <laughs> Most people yeah. do. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. He yeah, missed he a lot. My childhood. Really and um, this top five is very difficult, by the way, man. But 
I'm gonna go ahead. Um, uh, like I can have mm-hmm. twenty top fives, bro. But I'm gonna go ahead. That's and right. <laughs> I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna throw Bone Thugs and Harmony in there for what they meant for me. That's as a right, child, man. Wow. Wow, yeah. iconic legends as well, man. A great top yeah. five, man. Great top five. Yeah, that's, that's a tough one, man. I can go all day with that one, man. Because it's, you know, <laughs> yeah, man. So, okay, one. have you heard of the uh, Hip Hop Alliance? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not too familiar with it, but I heard about it. You should join in, man, and be a part of it. Uh, with the things you're doing um, out there in uh, Vietnam. We'll definitely connect with uh, what we're doing on the West Coast, on the East Coast, and all around the globe. Uh, if you can right now, because what they're doing is doing a um, thing called uh, Stop the Violence in Hip Hop. If you can leave a solution on the table for the youth of tomorrow to stop violence in hip hop, what would it be? Uh, I think the youth right now, they just need they need guidance. You know what I'm saying? They need somebody mm-hmm. to help them learn how to heal themselves, man. They need people to show them how to, you know, connect them, themselves to their um, their spiritual consciousness. Um, I, I don't think it's just a thing where somebody could just stop certain things. You know what I'm saying? We got to get to the root problems. You know what I'm saying? So what are the root causes of what's causing violence? You know, so I feel like, um, you know, if we really want to get down to nitty gritty, we would have to tackle the root causes on what's causing it. You know what I'm saying? And, and how it was caused. So I feel like educating it educating them about you know the history of where hip hop has come from, how hip hop was infiltrated, how hip hop has been used to weaponize us and um mm-hmm. or just music in general how it's been used to weaponize us and then um you can go from there. But that that's just not a a, a, a one day thing. That's a that's a process. No, it's gonna take some time because so there's a lot of damage done to our um to our communities. Mm-hmm. Crack era, you know what I'm saying? Um man, I can go all day. But if I had to just give them some advice right now, I would definitely say, man, um, you know, stay, stay tapped in on things that uh that the heart, you know what I'm saying? Move on your heart, you know, don't follow you in the right direction for the most part, I believe. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's you know? right. Absolutely. So Don says, my friend Creed. Anyway. So what what was your like biggest adjustment? Like at coming out of uh, basketball, what was the big, biggest adjustment or did was it just smooth selling? Uh, the biggest adjustment was just learning how to fill that void. You know, when you spend you know, the years and years of playing basketball, man, that's a big void, you know what I'm saying? That's a lot of hours out of the day, you dig? You know what I'm saying? Even in, in pro sports, you know, that's nine months out of the year, you know, where we actually playing basketball. So for me, it was actually filling that void and um, just finding productive things to do for myself. And um, that wasn't always a success because, you know, I found some, some bullshit stuff to get into a lot of times. So it's like, uh, I think in any transition in life, you know, one, you know, whatever it is, even if it's a, it's a relationship, man, you got to figure out a healthy way to fill those voids or, or, you know, life will fill it for you. And I don't think you want that. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. um, no, real. yeah, that was for me. Uh, yeah. And, um, uh, yeah, I moved to LA shortly after that. And then I'm um, just getting acclimated to LA and, you know, the ins and outs and how things were at that time, you know, as of 2011, you know, I'm sure it's a lot different now, but, uh, I ain't gonna lie, man. I, I was having fun. I had a lot of fun, man, during that transitional period. So, for me, man, it, it was definitely, you know, just making sure I had to, um, I was doing music a lot, you know, so I just made sure I did a lot of music, you know, and um, that's what I wanted to do. You know, and I was tapping in on um, doing a lot of community work as well. So, that helped. And what is, like, how do you deal with um, blocks when you have your creative blocks? How do you deal with those? Is there a method? Yeah, I don't. I don't. If I'm blocked, I'm, it's meant for me to do something else. I don't even. <laughs> I was never forced inspiration at all. Yeah. And um I already set my life Yeah, I already set my life up to where it's like I am not necessarily just making music for, you know, just the it is a different. So it's like if I if I ain't if I'm not feeling it, man, it's over. I'm I'm doing something else, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm a I'm back, back in. It'll come back around. It'll come back around. You mm-hmm. know, it's just yeah. But you know, once again, it, it all depends on what area you, you are you're in. Like if you have to make music 
to, in order to um uh, like some let's say somebody like paying you for a beat well then you know you have to you know you know you have to maneuver that way but you know willpower will you know if, if that's the case you might have to use some willpower you know what I'm saying? i don't think people talk about the importance of willpower as much as they used to you know just because we live in an era now where it's oh just you know manifest it and Thinking stuff goes have sometimes you got to use your willpower, man. You know, no, how you do, absolutely how, cool. Yeah, how do you come up with beats? Like, do you is it a, something catches your ear driving or you sit uh, down? Yeah, so whenever, whenever, I, whenever I, I just I, honestly, I just go through samples, loops. You okay. know, I feel like those are the, the easiest way. So, I, you know, I hear I go through a lot of different loops and samples and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And that right there just. Honestly, I don't make beats the way I used to. I used to make beats from start to finish, where I would just, you know, kick, drum, snare, transitions, melodies, bridge. Now, if I get a melody that I like, I throw a regular drum pattern over it, and then I record my vocals, and then I then I build the beat around it from that point. You know, oh, so man. it's just like I got pre-production, and then I got production, and then I got post post-production. So it's kind of hard for me to like sit down and just make bang out a bunch of beats now. You know what I'm saying? That's that's kind of something that I did when I was younger in my production days. You know, but nowadays, you know, I'm building full songs out. You know, even if it's somebody that wants a record, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to give them a, a hook. And, you know, I damn near might throw a verse on there just to give them the idea moving forward. Yeah. And as we all know, man, artists they, they do a lot better when they get a hook on there or you know some type of direction. So um, to me, it's all about producing. You know, and um, I love making. You know, beat making is fun. But it's just as not as fun as you know building out full tracks now. So, so is, what is the, of, okay, go ahead. No, are there any parallels mentally when you're preparing uh, for, to play basketball during your career in in producing music, like you know, like performing? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I definitely think there's you know a point in time where you got to you know dig in, you know, do a little meditating. Those are two things because, you know, we all know that all things is mental. So it's like if you, you know, taking the time to, you know, mentally prepare yourself for whatever you're doing, you know what I'm saying? You got a greater chance at, you know, succeeding in it, you know? So, you know, before I used to hoop, you know, I would always do my prayer and meditation. I would actually read scriptures, you know what I'm saying? I would read some scriptures, you know, and uh, align myself and just, you know, give myself the confidence that I need going out there, you know, spiritually, um, you know, I'm, I'm a, like I'm a firm believer in, you know, going inside first, you know, spirit, spirit, spirit. And then the Absolutely. physical, you know, comes from that point, you know what I'm saying? You know, you walk in the spirit and then you tap in on whatever it is you need to do. Like even before this interview, like I didn't know what I was going to say. You know what I'm saying? I just trust the spirit to guide me. I trust you as great interviewers to ask me the right questions. And then, um, you know, I get out the way, you know, and um, it's, it's really that flow state, you know what I'm saying? So maybe you guys get a chance, you know, look at what the, the flow state is. You want to get into that. And, um, you know, and, and all things pretty much. Absolutely. So um, while we're on this subject right here, I just need to ask this one good one I usually ask. Uh, how has uh, your faith in God played a role in your life, you know, and career as an artist and, you know, basketball player? Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's all connected for me. Um, I feel like, like I can't have one without the other. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I understand that I'm here on a specific mission. I'm here to grow, evolve myself, serve, support other people, balance out my life. You know what I'm saying? Learn from all the mistakes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and tap into wisdom. So, um, you know, the most high God is, is definitely, absolutely most. They say, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things be added unto you. And that goes back to what I was just saying. You can't do anything. I don't do anything without, you know, making sure I'm staying uh, you know, tapping in first. So it is everything, you know what I'm saying? Because once you go, I believe once you go into it with that mentality, I think the quality of whatever you're doing is, is, is going to end up being a little higher, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. not to say if I, I've always been that way. At times where, I, obviously, you know what I'm saying? In life, you know, you ain't going to always be at your best. But when, when I was at my best, and when I am at my best, it's, it's when I'm going inside out. Yeah, well, exactly. When you put God first, I feel you. That's the same way it feels with when I do that. When I put him first, man, it seems like my whole direction is focused. I'm on the right path for righteousness. I ain't doing nothing outside of what's wrong. And then it, and it's just good. It's a good feeling, man, that I get when I do it that way. Keeping God first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And it's crazy, like, you know, um 
that route, it, it, it takes longer. It, it, it's definitely one of those. They said, uh, they said fast money's for the devil, you know, slow money's for God. You know what I'm saying? So it's like mm-hmm. God is more interested in the, the growth and development, the service and the people that you actually mm-hmm. connect with versus, you know, the actual outcome that we always tend to want fast. So it's exactly. better that we, man, you know, I say take the elevator is, you know, you take the elevator up, but taking the steps is where you go get that, that muscle memory. You go when you get to the top, you want to be able to maneuver and stay in that space because you already, you saw a lot more things by taking this, by taking the steps up, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And the character that you build when you get there, it's going to keep you there. And um, once again, it, it's, it's more, it's, it's bigger than just, you know, just being successful here. You know what I'm saying? This is something that we need to take back with us because we all go transition one day. We just want to be Absolutely. able to look back and like, all right, did I do it the right way or did I do it for the wrong reasons? You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. that's just kind of what we're dealing with now. You know, that's kind of what I'm on. Yeah. And I kind of, that's definitely what I'm on. It's like that's right. preparing myself. Stilo B. Stilo. Yes, sir. Can you play one of them head knockers? Let him hear how you coming as a beat maker. See if maybe y'all can yeah. collab with some one day. Yeah, he got some tracks, man. He want to, you know, give you a, let you put your ears on it and see if you like his style to get down. I was going to ask you too, right before you do that, Stilo, uh, what would you consider your style like, uh, your music? Uh, I'm, I'm well-versed. I'm well-versed. I'm, I'm one of those artists where it's like, you know, I'm not I'm not the one who's going to be like, hey, man, I need something like this. Or never. Like, just send me something that you feel is dope. And uh, if I connect with it, I do it, man. Like I said, I love making all type of music, man. House music, dance music, dance music, hip-hop, jazz music. Uh, mm. Yeah, I'm open. I'm open, man. Okay, for sure. Let him hear some, Stilo. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, my brother. For sure. Yeah, that <laughs> that joint knocking. That's that. That's that's definitely West Coast. West Coast. West Coast. <laughs> yeah, I grew up on. I, I, honestly, West Coast hip hop was my favorite growing up, man. So it's like, yeah, I'm, I've always been connected to that sound, man. Like, that's dope. That joint. That joint hit hard, man. <laughs> that's right. Sure. So, uh, do you do you prefer uh, analog or uh, digital? He usually ask that question, but I like to ask it from time to time just to see your response. Or do you do, uh, or do you do both? Yeah, um, both. It's funny because this new album that I put out, um, Moyga Show premieres, is is pretty much it was a, it gave me the opportunity to tap in on some um, digital to analog because you can buy the vinyl. Mm. So it's like the vinyl is like the closest thing to analog we're gonna get these days. But um, right. I mean, obviously, I, I started off analog. You know what I'm saying? I started off, started off with hardware and stuff like that. Um, but for the most part, man, like I said, I'm, I'm I'm building a digital empire right now. So it's like me me working with my digital spaces is you know it, it's it's where it's at. Hey, it's funny because I just posted something on my own. I got another um, Instagram called Moega Show. That's pretty much my brand for everything I'm doing right now, musically and, and production wise. And uh, I just mm-hmm. I made a beat by using my mouth. That's it. Wow. The, kicks, the, snare, the melodies, the bass, the hi hats, everything. Um, just just straight up from my mouth. So it's like I mean that's that's pretty analog. You know. What that's, saying? Greatness <laughs> <display>, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's greatness on display, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's greatness on display, bro. Wow, yeah. that's talent. I if you do that last now, night. Now, if you do use software. Yeah, do you mind if I ask what software programs you prefer? Uh, I've been using FL Studio since um shit, 99. Wow, that's been a long time. So you you kind of <laughs> wait for that one, man. You can do everything on that FL Studio, put down a beat, record, and get it out, master it all at you once. Can do you can actually hook up analog, you know, equipment to it as well. You know, MIDI yeah, keyboards, yeah. NPCs. So you know it's pretty compatible with anything, you know, turntables. So it's, it's mm. so um 
Yeah, man. Elbow Studios. Yeah, Elbow Studio is it's, my it's, favorite. It's real flexible. You know what I mean? It's it's, uh, it's it's pretty dope. I like it. I use it. It's one of my my favorite gifts in life, man. FL Studio. <laughs> That's right. It's been there for me every step of the way, man. I, I can say that. Mm-hmm. FL Studio been there with me for every step of the way. Your video momentum. Uh, tell us about that. Oh yeah, I recorded that in 2000, um, 2015, I want to say. Yeah, Momentum. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, I love that record, man. That's that's a classic. You know, I feel like a lot of people still like that song. Uh, it's something that, you know, we all, you know, can use at times. You know what I'm saying? You know, gaining that momentum is uh is very powerful, especially when you when you locked in. So it's like, um, yeah, that, that was cool. That that's when um I, I think that was on my zoning album. Yeah, so the video is still out on YouTube. And uh, yeah, 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 Momentum. I might start dropping like different clips on Monday, Momentum Mondays, you know what I'm saying? Put a little message behind it, you know, drop like 20 seconds of the track, you know, and um, see if that can gain some momentum. Cause I that's need- right. That's, that's clever, man. Absolutely. Momentum. Yeah. You had a video there? Can you play it? I sure can. Absolutely. Hold on one minute. Here, here we go with Momentum by Mo Ager. Gain the momentum. I'm gaining 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 momentum. About to light the city up like Tesla. And they down underneath like it's Groundhog Day, man. They scared of the press. Drake and Big Sean ain't the only ones out here getting blessed. It all depends what you consider a blessing. I consider it cool when all my bros in the sky like Jetsons. I'm a living legend from the D, used to live in the projects. Now I'm passport and overseas, needed to believe. Man, they staring at me, I'm a foreign object. I done made a lot of moves, gaining momentum. Free agent team maker, but I'm looking like the number one prospect. They complain about their jobs, but they sticking to the program. Tell me why you ain't a boss yet. Cause I done made a decision to go left when everybody else thought it was better for me to stay in the league. Cause I done paved the way to do whatever I please. And at the time it felt better to leave. Look, I made a choice that was better for me. Cause I was ready to spread my wings and fly your way. And be my own boss, it was better for Reese. And credit to God, I done made it to the higher level, made it to the higher elite. And doing everything I aspire to be. And I don't need another man firing me. I'd rather fall off on my own and still land on my feet. And don't compare me with no other hoopers when it comes to making music, cause I do it in my sleep. And you still hibernating on me? It's all good, little homie, rest in peace. I'm gaining momentum, I'm gaining momentum. 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 Look, I spend hours on my Twitter account replying to all of my people, working to the roots to croak. I done been around the world twice and back, trying to get the whole crew to go. I'ma go so hard to the heavens, say that's enough, Aga. You done made it to the theaters, you done maxed out. I'ma do the most with my life, you gon' live and die a hater. I'm annihilate them, dilate it now. Cause my mind is open to the higher knowledge, higher learning, cause I read it for myself. Shout out to our banks, I owe my Fs. Man, they rather see us die on the steps. Man, they scared for the black man to get a little bit of knowledge. There's more people in the prison than it is up in college. Real talk, man, I got to be honest. Tom Mizzle made a promise to my mama that I would graduate. And I made it to the day with the cap and gown, man. Thank God for the right away. And we done been broke for years. Now we enjoy the finer things. We in the final days. And the devil's in this hideaway. Uh, I'm gaining momentum. I'm gaining momentum. I'm gaining momentum. I'm gaining momentum. Hmm. I'm gaining momentum. 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 What up, though? Zone. 
this bonus. Should have just put this on the album, man. It's good. Whatever. Peace. You wow. got flow. Wow. It's crazy listening to it. I'm just like, damn. Like Gotta um, spit back and come back. <laughs> like, I listen to that, that flow and I was like, bam, bam, bam. bam. Had to stamp the greatness, my brother. That was dope. I like that. Uniquely flow, man. You got lyrics. Appreciate it. Wow. How long did it take you to write that? Appreciate it. It's crazy. Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. But it's just funny, like listening to it. I'm just like, damn, like the content is still relevant today. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, the flow is a little, you know, the flow may be changed up. You know, I don't really rap like that no more. But um, it, it's kind of dope to see that, you know, you know, I was on the path then, you know what I'm saying? And, um, mm -hmm. You know, just stand on the path is the most important thing, man. It's, that's the hardest part, man, just stand on the path. And But uh, it, that was that was cool. Sometimes, you know, it, it's sometimes kind of weird. Hey, uh, um, Stilo, is sometimes is it weird for you to listen to like your old beats and stuff like that? Oh yeah, man. When I did... <laughs> yeah, it is because I, I can listen to something that I did back in two thousand and four, and I'll be like, "Damn, I did that one." You know what I mean? Like it, it's it's a uh... right, right. You, you like, yeah. man. you know, like, because man. because from then to like now, you got so much better after that, right? Yeah, exactly. So you look back at that, you hear something you haven't heard for a couple of years, and then you be like, "Damn, I should, I should, I could have did it like this. I don't know why I did it like that." But I mean, it still sounds good, you know what I mean. But yeah. to you, it's like, man, I should have did better than that, you know what I mean. But but it's still yeah. good. Yeah. That's kind of yeah, yeah. That's how you feel as an artist, as an yeah. artist, because it's like you listening to it, you like ah, you kind of like mm, <laughs> kind of like cringing a little bit. But to, to the <laughs> listener, that's new to them. Right, right. It's, it's, it's still new old, to them, but in no your mind, how, you're like, oh, back like that, but, all right. <laughs> still gonna be new to somebody that just barely hearing that. So, you know, it just. Because I, I, I played tracks that I did, like I said, 2004. I got tracks that I did in 2002. And I hear some, yeah. like one person to hear too. it, nobody ain't never heard it but myself. But once that person hears it, they're like, oh shit, that, that's dope. And I was like, really? You know what I mean? Like, but you know, it is what it is, man. But I, hey, I, tell I understand what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty dope, though. Tell us about your video, Bad Habits. Because you went from oh, yeah, momentum yeah, to bad, bad habits. Bad. Yeah. That, that shows you the, the journey, you know what I'm saying? That, uh, you know, in between that, you know, I think I dropped that in 2021. You know, Bad Habits is, is basically just, you know, you know, when you're on this path, you know, you pick up bad habits, whether they're from ones you developed. Or, you know, some of them come from your lineage, your blood, your bloodline. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure we all have people in our family who struggle with liquor, you know what I mean? Uh, over sexualization, you know, all of these things. Remember, remember I, we were talking earlier about, you know, helping the youth and, you know, and in terms of, you know, how could we help them make better choices musically and stuff like that? Um, That goes back to the bad habits. It's like, all right, why are we doing these bad habits? You dig? So it's like um, a lot of times, like I said, it goes back to the root problem. You have uncles, you have mothers, you have fathers who, who struggle with certain things that you pick up. You dig, but it's up to you to actually recognize it and do whatever you got to do and as far as willpower to change it. Because, mm -hmm. like I said, it's, 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 it's easier to be like, oh, man, you got to stop doing that. But it's like, damn, why am I doing this, man? Why am I, you know, why am I addicted to something? You know what I'm saying? So it's like once you figure out what a, what a problem is, like, all right, see, there it is right there clean that up and then you're able to actually yeah. fix the habit and then you know how important it is to clean that habit up because you don't want to pass down these bad habits to the next generation you want to mm -hmm. put these bad habits out into the world because at the end of the day collectively we're supposed to be in this place up you know what i'm saying to a certain degree so individually 
these, these bad habits are the things that we need to go ahead and start nipping in the bud. You know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, you know, you don't want to leave here with that in you, in you, period. So it's like bad habits was a fun way of me being able to, you know, kind of talk about some of those things. Yeah, pretty, yeah, that's, pretty that's, dope. That's pretty dope. <clears throat> I feel what he's coming from because I got something that I'm doing that's similar. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of looking back at when I was growing up. You know, in my family ways, you know, we had it wasn't always good, man. It wasn't always good. So when, once I grew up and then I had kids, you know, I had to I was saying to myself, I got to break that. That's got to break. You know, what I mean, it's got to it's got to come to an end, not just keep going. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. The, the problem, yeah. the, 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 the original the, curse. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's like a, a yeah. curse I seen growing up. And I was like, once I got big and I and I had kids, I was like, man, this thing can't go with my kids. So. I taught my kids to say, man, you know what? Y'all better be good with each other. Your your brothers, your sisters, never never have that division. You know what I mean? You guys yeah. gotta be good with each other, respect each other, love one another, no matter what. You know what I mean? Because I, you know, like I said, man, I'm gonna throw it out there. When I was growing up, it wasn't always pretty in my family, man. You know? Yeah, no had, doubt. Wow. Rough times, no man, doubt. and it was it's crazy. And I, I was <laughs> wondering, why in the hell do family members gotta treat each other that way? You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I think it's, it's, it's deep. deep I think the worst part about that is the fact that um, with bad habits, we use those as as ways to justify the habit. Like, well, you know, you know, my auntie did it, my uncle did it, it runs in my blood. It's like, so it's like you continue to justify the bad habits just because it was something that you was brought up on instead of recognizing it and changing it yeah. to better your life. Ultimately, man, I mean, life is better when you when you kill habits, man, and um. You know, I'm I'm constantly mastering myself and, and certain things and, and making sure I'm just killing these habits so I can she can ultimately have the best experience possible, man. That's you know, we can get deep into it, but ultimately, man, so I can have the best experience possible. So uh, um it's good that you recognize that too, fam. So you can actually continue to move forward, man, and just have a crispy life, man. You feel me? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> you right about that. Hey, can you share uh any goals or aspirations you have for the future? Um, um, physically, man, uh, right now, I just want to get this digital empire off the ground, man. I want to get the mortgage show popping. You know, uh, I got the YouTube channel, music, okay. skits. We're going to, we're going to support all of that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, you know, yeah, I feel like, you know, my merchandise line I started this year is dope, man. You know, I designed 26 new designs that's up on my, um, well, I'm actually using Teespring at the moment. So, you know, I, I shoot all that stuff to y'all, man. So I take, okay, absolutely. I take more. Yeah, I take moments and then, you know, I, I design moments and, uh, you know, I make it like a um, pretty much a design, you know, and I throw it on That's merchandise, nice. shirts, hoodies, nice. bucket hats, you know, book bags, you name it. So it's like I'm really, really excited about getting, getting this merch line cracking because everything is actually like you said earlier in the show, man, everything's coming full circle. You know what I'm saying? So it's like mm -hmm. with the Moega show, man, that's actually an implication of, you know, the sports music, you know, the comedy, you know, the, you know, the. Um, everything you know what i'm saying so that's that's what i'm tapped in on right now you know just getting that digital empire cracking and then um spiritually man you know just being able to um you know help help people clean man that's why we got the baby fox the baby fat detox cleanser man just to help people you know even if they don't use my cleanser there's plenty of cleansers out there man you know i think this is the time to like you know just start you know taking that serious you know what i'm saying like i think for years i kind of neglected how important health is man until i went to the hospital in june man i almost died from a gastric infection my appendix was about wow. to erupt so um you know between this year and the year before that you know i was already having appendix problems so that put me in a, a space where i'm just like i really learned a lot about how important it is to keep the gut clean you know what i'm saying because they say that your gut is a, another brain and that's where your intuition is so if that's where your intuition is oh man we got to keep that clean so you can actually think thoughts um think clearly you know what I'm saying? So you can actually be able to peep some bullshit when, the, you know what I'm saying? Your intuition is right there. I'm sure we all feel it. So, you know, uh, I feel like I became I became a lot more passionate about, you know, cleaning that stomach out. And that's why baby fat water is uh, something that I feel that can help people. But nonetheless, man, it's I'm still sending out the signal like, hey, listen, you ain't got to you ain't got to rock with what I'm doing. Just go over and figure out a way to clean yourself up, because the more people on this planet that raise their vibrational frequency, the easier it is for the heavens to actually help move us along and during these absolutely that's what i'm saying you want to call it that you know what i'm saying 
Mm-hmm. Well, praise God, you're okay. Yes, Go yes. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Glory to his mighty name. Absolutely. So if you could leave a scripture with us, what would it be? Um, my favorite scripture right now, man, is my go-to right now. Seek ye first kingdom, God and his righteousness, and all these things better be added unto you. Um, somebody can get that one. I'm sure. I'm sure that's um. But oh yeah, absolutely. We're one. gonna we're gonna pull it up and get it lock it in because that's what we do over here, man. We from time to time read scriptures. Uh, we have artists pray over the show. All kind of things, man, just to keep God on the on the horizon in front of all of it. Because we don't do it unless we put him first. You understand me? That's what we do over here on the Shears and Italian TV going forward. We're paying it forward, actually. This is like a legacy show that a young child will be able to see 10, 20, 30 years from now and have some great knowledge and messages coming from it. Nuggets. I'm talking about grand nuggets. You came with some mighty, mighty powerful words, man. And I love that in you. You know what I mean? Go ahead. And that goes back to what you said, man. Just that divine alignment because what I'm about, it's not a lot of people coming reaching out for that type of message. Because right now we, mm-hmm. we living in a world where we already know what it is. We know what people want to hear. You know what I mean? This is where this what I represent, it represents accountability. You know what I'm saying? Getting yourself together in terms of spirituality. And, um, mm-hmm. Like I said, for me to be connected with you guys, you ask me the right questions. It's not nothing along the lines of no. I understand. I believe in toxic. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm not toxic. I'm, I believe in balance. But I don't necessarily believe in, you know, toxicity like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and those are the things that's pushing it, moving the needle constantly. So it's like what they say, many you call, few are chosen. So that means that mm. the message that I have and the things that I'm going to produce it might not be a lot of people reaching out to me to be able to talk like this because, you know, it's not the popular thing, but it's the needed thing. I believe it's the needed. You know exactly. I believe that what I represent, it represents what's, what, you know, what's going to help heal. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying it's the end all be all, but it's a start. You know what I'm saying? It's along mm-hmm, the lines mm-hmm. of what yeah. you know, the consciousness. I, you know, I'm aligned. I'm aligned in the spirituality with the consciousness and with the body. You did. Mm-hmm. And then being able to bring it all together. So you can ultimately become the greatest version of yourself, right? You know, absolutely do good things. So, mm-hmm. You know, those are the that's the major that's the main challenge. You know, I, I you know I talked about earlier about you know getting my music out there and all that, but it's like really being who I am and not necessarily feeling like I have to, you know, um, compromise who I am in order to get attention. We did mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. if I have to do those things to get attention, it's not even worth it. And um, you know, a lot of these law of attraction teachers. These are the things that they forget to tell you. It's like, oh, you can have anything you want. You can have this, that, and the other, but at what cost? Right. Mm-hmm. But what that cost? But at what cost? Like, what is? What are you willing? And at this point, man, you know, I, I'd have made it this far on the game, man. I feel like you know, quality is better than quantity. So I'm gonna go ahead mm-hmm. and continue. Definitely. To stick with that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely correct. Wow, I just man. Think- Keep putting it putting it out because um I, I think it's um uh, that's something people are thirsting for. It's just that the radio is pushing something other than. Um and I was sure. uh watching an interview and one of the executives said uh I think it was in like two million dollars. Like if you want to get your stuff on the radio, two million dollars. And then um and in one show, the lady said to make your um, she can help you make your your song go viral, but it's gonna cost you eighty thousand dollars. So it's a matter. So yeah, pay to play. play. But, <laughs> so, but I do think people are thirsty for for that because if you go on YouTube, you'll see a lot of uh spiritual channels with millions of views so people are thirsty for the type of stuff yeah, that you're true. putting out there so uh that's true just keep putting it out because somebody's oh, out there exactly. looking for it and and eventually they're gonna hear it mm-hmm. absolutely and and i would be completely honest man i'm you know um you know my material is pretty edgy you know what i'm saying i'm not all the way just clean 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 but the message is always there you know what i'm saying the power and the message is always there the intention is always there, and um, 
And that's what it is. You just said it perfectly. It's like, I know it's there. You know, I just need to be able to connect with those people who are actually looking for me and what I have to offer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and bridging Someone, the gap in that way. And I, I feel like once that happens, it's, it's ball game. We good. Because yeah, it's about, some, it ain't like, no, no, I was just going to say someone told me if you have a dollar and you're starting a company, 99 cent better be towards marketing. So yeah. that's what you, so that's it. You just got to market your stuff and mm -hmm. maybe get a digital marketer. That's it. That's because it's so people could see it. Like I say, I say this all the time. You'll hear me say this all the time. Putting out music is like being in the middle of the ocean. If nobody sees the signal, you're going to be stuck out there. So somebody got to see the signal. And the only way for you sure. can get out there, you know, is, is market it. But people are thirsty for that, believe it or not. Yeah. You know, I feel like that's probably been my main my main um obstacle. You know, I feel like I've been pretty good at a lot of things. You know, I'm multi-talented. But, you know, just marketing, that's not necessarily my niche. You know what I'm saying? Especially with, yeah. you know, the way that um, the algorithms work. You know, just to add. Like you gotta, you know, pay paying for ads on Instagram. That, that still doesn't necessarily equate, you know. So it's like, yeah. like I said, it's something that I have to figure out along the way. But uh, yeah, you know, shows like this help. You know what I'm saying? People spreading the word, Absolutely. Help, you know, because you know mm -hmm. when you know, you know, yeah, like word of mouth is the greatest marketing. So it's like most Absolutely. definitely interviews, and, you know, most definitely. Then, you know, next thing you know, I follow a lot of people. I end up following people just because I see them on the um. I might see him on a podcast or interview or something like that, you know, and I might go sub to him and, and cause you know, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Like I say, we, uh, we subscribe to you too. We, we, we gonna follow all your stuff. Uh, and you know, you, this is your second home, my brother, you always welcome over here. You can come back anytime, anytime. You hear me? Anytime. You say something. That's love, man. Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah. It, man, know, we're try, trying to um, you know, collaborate with you on sending artists that way and everything when you're ready to get your show up and going and everything. Talent, because that's what we do over here. We searching for talent, man. That God given gift yeah. that somebody has that's in the ghetto. You understand me? We know that 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 ghetto got talent. We got a show we do over yeah. here called Tattoo. So yeah, uh huh. And uh yeah, we'll we'll definitely be working with you to shoot you talent and everything like that so we can stay in cahoots. You know what I mean? Stay connected. No. You know? No, I mm -hmm. love it, man. That's, that's, that's what it's about, man. Connecting with other, other people that's on your your um your mind frame, man. That's a that's a beautiful thing. You know, to connect Absolutely. with other people that's that's uh that's on the path with you, man. You know? What they say, uh being equally Equally yoked, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Who who said something? Well, uh, I don't know. Hey, do you have any anything else you want to let the world know before you uh go? I don't know if you're ready to go yet, but uh, you know, we still here. I got questions to ask you, but I don't, you know, want to burn you out or nothing. I know you. Oh, it's no, early out there, right? Okay. That's okay, uh, so if you were stranded on an island and uh, you can only bring one album, not yours, what album would that be? Um, dang. That would be... <laughs> I like where they scratched their head. One album. <laughs> mm. I just had to say um, any Marvin Gaye album. Any yeah. Marvin Gaye. Wow, that's major. Yeah, I had to that's say major. any Marvin Gaye. That's major. Wow. Marvin that's crazy, Gale. man. I thought about Malcolm Michael Jackson. Dang. Because I was thinking about like Thriller or something like that because I might need that energy. Like... <laughs> 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 Marvin Gaye, that's kind of that might be a little more depressing. Like <laughs> you're gonna be by yourself in that island there with one album. Like <laughs> yeah, I might have to go with like thriller or something, dog. <laughs> Off the wall or something. That's right. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Not at all. Tell us about your merchandise. You said uh, uh you you capture moments. 
Can you elaborate? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you know, I got album covers, album covers that I created, song covers that I created, um, you know, different shows where I do like when I might do a, a concert or something, you know, I take those photos, you know, and I make designs around it, and then um, I put it on, you know, um, hoodies, mugs, t-shirts, hats, um, book bags, iPhone covers, um, Nintendo Switch covers, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it, it's basically. Um, and then I take concepts as well, you know. Uh, I take concepts and, and you know, little funny little concepts. Um, I have different characters within the Morgan show that I have. Uh, I have a character named Uncle Sly. Uh, he, uh, you know, he has a line as well. Um, you know, video game stuff. Um, what else we have? Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it at this point. You know, what I'm saying like I like I got a haircut the other day, right? Got a first body and whatever and um the ambiance was so dope it was like some nice nice little colorful ambiance you know, so i took a picture there and um captured the background i took that and um i designed the cover around it and then put it on merch so you know it, it all depends like if i see something dope we go take a picture of it you know we go we go make something out of it so you know, i'm just trying to use my environment to make something make something out of nothing that's dope <laughs> What's the name of your merchandise again? And where can and tell the people where they can find it? Uh it's it's Mo Ager Show Apparel and then it's on Teespring. Um and that's Massa M A S A. Mo Ager Show well, Apparel. That's, that's pretty dope. You should have br- had some with you. You could have showed it, showed it, held it up and uh, showed us what yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually just started the line maybe a few weeks ago. Oh wow! So it was, yeah, so I, I don't even have inventory at this point, but you know, Teespring they have all the inventory. So I, you know, I just pretty much I like working with Teespring, Teespring and couple companies like that because I had a, I had a company um when I, when I was actually doing merchandise a few years ago and um failed I failed epically, man. You know, what I'm saying I didn't do a good job. You know, it, I figured that just wasn't for me, man. It was a lot of things that I just didn't do well with it, so I learned from those mistakes. So now I work with a third party country um, company. Who pretty much manufacture everything, you know, and um, they ship everything as well. So that takes a lot of my, because me being over in Vietnam, man, it made shipping so hard and difficult, man. So, um, you wow, know, that, yeah. that was, you know, you know um, things that I learned from, you know, just being tapped in with the merchandise stuff. So yeah, um, I'm going to give you guys my my Instagram for that as well. You know, saying so you can go through my Instagram and look at all the designs. I have three different Instagrams. I have the Moager, my uh, my regular Instagram, and I have the Moager Show. M O E A G E R show. That's all my production stuff, music, skits, vlogs, voiceovers, concept stuff. I do a lot of, a lot of funny stuff on there, man. You know, <laughs> then more of a show apparel. So I make sure you guys have all these handles, you know. So that's okay. that's what I'm doing, man. I'm trying to build this digital empire so I can just live. And, you know, we were talking about going viral earlier, man. I think for me, um, I'm never looking for a viral moment. I don't think about going viral. Yeah. That's not enough. that's not something that I'm actually really interested in because I feel like if you go viral, you you have to be able to recreate that. You know what I'm saying? And do it again. And do it again. And for me personally, I would rather just kind of build myself up steady so I can continue to do things that I know I can create over and over and over again. You know what I'm saying? Viral moments. That shit might be somebody falling off a a, a cliff. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. Then that's you know they viral, you know what I'm saying? And you know, and, you know, for me, man, I had to be able to replicate it. And um, so that's what I'm doing now, man. The things that I'm doing, I know I can always do over and over again. Continue to put out there and um and build it up steady, man, no matter how long it takes. Well, you're pretty motivated, and um if you do go viral, I don't think you'll have a problem replicating it. Yes. So you you, know, you seem pretty self-motivated yeah. and um smart. So I, I don't see see, see you having a problem, but you know you don't need to be famous to make a living, and like you said, you you're ba- you're you basically want to be happy. It's all about being happy and making a living doing something you love. Mm-hmm. It's healthy man, healthy fame is a fame is a a drug. Mm-hmm. Fame is a real drug, and um I, we've seen it happen to the best of them, and I'm good. You know, I just rather have a, a durable living, you know what I'm saying? Have a healthy community of people who rock with what I'm doing mm-hmm. and work from there. You know what I'm saying? Like, simple, simple, simple. like I have I've had opportunities to go that route, but 
I'm good. God chose me to go other ways. And uh, I'm going to ride with that. Absolutely. <clears throat> oh, so uh, <clears throat> going back to the uh, to the school, do you see uh, what's what's the age of the kids you work with out there? You know, I know you said you uh, coach for adults as well, but like the kids. Yeah. Uh, the kids, I go from anywhere from um, I say anywhere between nine and you got nine and twelve, nine and thirteen. And then um thirteen, you know, you know, fourteen, all the way up to like seventeen, and then um some okay. young adults. And then young now, adults well. um, do do you see any like breakouts, kind of you know, stars? Can you see a star in a kid, like a basketball star in a kid at that age? In America, for sure. Out here, nah. Oh. <laughs> okay. No okay. Way. America, yeah, mm. you can tell who could be nice when they little. You know mm. what I'm saying? But out here, nah, man, that's not even. Thing. Wow, not even close. Nah, 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 they they big on education out here, man. That's like the thing. Like sports is kind of like something to do. You know, you might find one or two that's actually passionate about it, but you know, this Asia, you know what I'm saying? It's it's they go to school down there six, seven days of the week. You know what I'm saying? So you know, wow. the basketball is growing, and the parents are recognizing that. Uh, you know. Uh, it's a good way for the children to actually learn English through mm -hmm. interactive, interactive studies. They like to call it. You know what I'm saying? So mm. um, it's a niche, but uh, nah, I don't see no stars out here. No way. Hey, uh, okay. Maurice Singer, I know my boy Blu-ray mentioned it earlier about Rockbox giving a holler at you. Uh, he wanted me to ask you: uh, Is there any way he can get in contact with you? So he asked me if I can give you his number, and and what is that, probably through your Instagram or something. Yeah, yeah. IG. IG is the easiest way. Then, okay. Um, we can go from there. I want to touch bases with you because he did mention to me that, uh, you know, you produced uh, a couple of tracks, if not one or two, on that album yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Rabbit Got the Gun. You don't <laughs> yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So he asked me, he said, holler at him oh, for me, man. Oh. Tell him, give him my number because I want to touch bases with him again. Probably want to do, you know, some more tracks or something, man. You know, I'm pretty sure that's what it is, but mm -hmm. what's it? Yeah, if nothing else, it'd be good to hear from her after a minute. Absolutely. You said it was about 10 years, huh? Yeah, probably longer than that. Oh, that's a little longer than that. Wow. Absolutely. <laughs> that's amazing, man. That's so, wow. <laughs> so so do you um uh, travel back and forth from there and here, or do you you, you basically stationed out there for for a while. Did you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Now I'm pretty much stationary here for now. Like ever since COVID, I haven't really done us traveling outside of here now. So I'm, I just I'm pretty much been here. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I haven't been back to America since um, 2017. So it's been a minute. Oh, it's been a nice little minute, huh? <laughs> and so producing, producing out there. So you just send your tracks over and then you go from there to get artists on your tracks like that? Or how do you go about recording them? Yeah, man. Like everything's email. Like, you know, like I'm working with different artists right now. They just send stuff back and forth. And uh, it's been mm -hmm. like that for the past 10, 12 years musically. So, wow. it's, it, wow. you know, you know we, we build, you know, FaceTime and stuff like that. So it works. Okay. You know, some of oh, the cool. people's favorite oh. artists. Yeah, that's that's how music is done, man. You know, but uh, I work with artists out here too. Okay, okay. <clears throat> um, what I was gonna ask you: uh, Have you ever heard of this uh, program called Sound Trap? I think it is. Sound Trap. Yeah. No, nah, no, nah, I never heard of that. Wow, that's a platform where you can uh, record all across the globe from you know anywhere with that program right there. I haven't fully learned it, but uh. I'm starting to, um, you know, use that because that's how me and uh, Steela are going to be starting to do a lot of our stuff as well. You know, working with other artists, students? you know. And, uh, huh? Okay. Say that again? Oh, I look into that. Yeah. yeah, check it out. Um, and then also, man, uh, <clears throat> we might get with you. Uh, we're doing a, um, a, a respect challenge. I got a respect challenge out there right now, and I would like for you to be a part of it if you can. 
uh, do a verse of okay. respect. Your know, the best verse of respect, acapella. Make sure we get it, and we're gonna start working it from there. Uh, I'm trying to do a big yeah. record, you know, to pay homage to uh to uh, yeah. the Queen of Soul. You know who it is. Big respect to her. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Aretha Franklin. Yeah, yeah, Aretha yeah. Franklin. Yeah. So definitely. The more verses I get, the bigger the song is gonna be. But all the verses of respect, you know, taking brothers that's you know from the street. Who are changing their life around and putting respect in their in their music now is is one of the solutions that I have on the table for uh you know stopping Definitely. violence in hip hop. You have the beat and everything, huh? You have the beat already? No, it's just acapella, just acapella, acapella verse. Late, acapella later, verse. We'll, later we'll probably put a, well later on we'll put a beat around it and build it. Mm hmm. Oh, okay, I got you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a dope concept to do it this way because I might can get a beat from you to put under one of the other artists or vice versa under me or you know what I'm saying? Because we all flow, right. so <laughs> you might be yeah, on Stilo's hard. beat, but it's, it's going to be dope. It's a dope concept that's already that's locked dope. in and we got people coming through with the verses. And so, yeah, I would definitely like you to yeah. get on that, man. I think you'll be phenomenal. You Something know what like I'm saying? It's about pushing that positive message. Go ahead, Stilo. I was gonna say, is it something like a cipher, right? But yeah, I sort of like a cipher. Yeah. Sort of like a cipher, yeah, but it's yeah, more yeah. or less, you know, getting brothers to change their mindset that, you know, basically put some respect in your rhyme and do the best you can and send it to us. You know what I mean? Because then we'll be able to hear exactly you know, where it is you go. Huh? I remember what on DJ Clay K Slay did a few years ago. We had mm -hmm. like 15, 20 oh, different yeah. artists on the track. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, like yep. I, I, I like what he did. That was dope. You know exactly. I mean? Somebody from New York come on. They in New York in the corner, boom, boom, laying it down. And then mm -hmm. right after that, oh, ju -ju 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 -ju, and then somebody from Miami will come up and boom, boom. <laughs> that was That's sort of like what this is going to be like. Absolutely, yep. That was dope. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. yeah. I got you, bro. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, um, I got a couple more questions. I guess I can ask you if Stilo, do you have any? I was waiting on Miss C note to come back to see if she had any one any more for you, but is that her coming in? Let me see. I don't know if she's coming back, but uh, no, that's not her. Nah. I'll give her a couple more minutes, and then we'll probably just be able to get on up out of here. I just want to wait and see if she's gonna come back. Mm hmm. Are you gonna do like little clips from um from these segments to put them out like different like um like sound bites and stuff like that? Yeah, we would love to do that. You you do do that type of work because you oh, can clip yeah. it up if you want and put them out. Yeah, I mean I don't have a problem with it. It's all love, okay. you know what I mean. We we starting to do that. Use them as shorts, little you know special moments in the show. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's, that's, I, mean, I feel like that's the um that's what a lot of content creators are doing now, you know what I'm saying? They take like four minutes, four or five minutes of each segments and slowly releasing those and then they, I mean, I guess that's kind of marketing, huh? You know what I'm saying? They're doing like yeah. four or five minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's mm -hmm. different, different parts. Yeah. And then uh, mm -hmm. I guess they release the whole thing later on, but, you know, a lot of people are tuning in on the, on the shorts, you know, so I mean, that, that'd be something. Speaking, speaking from a person who don't know nothing about marketing. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <clears throat> so if it was a young man, if it was a young young man right now looking at this show, who may have uh, you know, been watching and said, "Man, I like to follow in his footsteps," what kind of message would you give him? It could be a female as well too, but I'm just saying. I know it's more heavily male dominated when it comes to this hip hop. For one, they can reach out to me. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I have no problems, you know what I mean, guiding people and helping people in the right direction. Uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, I mentor a lot of people, you know, so I have no problems doing that. But um, I, I would okay. definitely say uh, you got to follow your heart. Mm. That's it. At this point in time, it's like, you know, um, following money, you know, we, I think we all know what it is. You know what I'm saying? We all need to make money, right? You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. inevitable. I, but I, I'm a firm believer right now more than ever, man. Just do whatever's in your heart, man. That, that's the most important thing. Do things you enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know what I'm saying? And, and move on inspiration. 
don't force it. You know what I'm saying? If you're inspired to do something, that's what you should do. And if you can do it, then do it then. Don't don't put it off. Don't hold it off. If you have an opportunity to be able to move on an idea that, you know, spirit give you and you hold off on it, um, then, you know, you know, I don't I don't want to say that's a bad or a good thing, but I feel like if you're inspired to do something, if you can do it right then and there, like, man, there's been times I had ideas. I can be at a dinner, you know, I mean, if I got an idea and I'll break away and go and and you know do as much as I can for the idea right then and there just to kind of keep the energy flowing. Mm. Got you. Miss Shino? Yes, I, I'm sorry, fellas. I'm having technical difficulties, but I'm back in at least. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, do you uh, mix and master your music as well? Uh, Yeah, I do my own, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because I like, I like mine to sound... I like my own sound, you know what I'm saying? I used to use people for years, and uh, especially been in LA, you know, you you know, <clears throat> it was always hard to get stuff mixed. It was always super expensive. And then the more and more I started like just hanging around mix engineers and stuff like that, I I, got, I became more fascinated with mix engineers than actual producers and artists, you know what I'm saying? Cuz you know, they're the ones who actually sit there making certain things sound a certain way. And the main thing they told me was like, "Listen, man, it's like there's really no real one way to do this. It's like it's your sound at the end of the day." You know, what I'm saying as long as it's, you know, sitting at a certain level where you know, you know, people can listen. It's you did, but it's like for me, I, I just really stopped trying to compare my sound with anybody else and just recognize like, no, my mix goes sound the way my mix sound, and um, so I do. And um, one of the things I love about my own personal mix is I, I like to keep stuff a little bit dirty, a little bit. I like to keep it soulful. I like I don't like just clean, 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 clean stuff. Like not to say that you know, clean sounds are very important, but I like to make it still sound like a person did it. Raw, raw cut. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah, it's still raw. I mean, a little ghetto, ghetto. You know what I'm saying? Like, ghetto <laughs> <makes me. laughs> That's right. <laughs> Greatness on display, ladies and gentlemen, right here on the Shiz Nit Talent TV. Yes. My main man, man, Mo Ager, man, it's been a man, a absolute, a absolutely plum pleasing pleasure having you, man. Appreciate it's your it. birthday today. I want to say again, happy birthday. Hey man, God is awesome, man. I need you. you to keep God in your life. Keep doing what you're doing. This is your second home over here. You're more than welcome to come back anytime. As soon as you get something hot off the presses, make sure you come back. And let us break it over here too. While you're breaking it on your channel and everything, we want to extend that love out to you and help grow it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Man. Man. I, you guys follow me on Instagram too, right? I think I saw. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely stay linked and, up with y'all for sure. Oh, Don said happy birthday and thanks for coming on. Thanks, Don. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So what you got? What what what's the rest of your day looking like since it's your birthday? Uh I'm cooling, man. It's raining. Thought about Oh, it's raining out. out there. Wow. Yeah, it's been raining every day. Somebody will probably just go go grow with the fam now. Cool out. Mm -hmm. I, I go back okay. to sleep. Who knows? Uh, mm -hmm. cool. But we got dinner later on. We got dinner. Later oh, on. okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna chill, man. I'm gonna take it easy tonight, man. Take it easy. That's right. Wow. Normally, you know, what I'm pleasure, man. normally I'm probably in the streets, you know, doing those mm -hmm. type of things. But I'm good on that this year, man. I'm gonna keep it crispy. Okay. Keep it crispy. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, and it's an honor, man. Honor to have you on, man. For real, it was a privilege Thanks, to have bro. you. Send right me some beats, homie. Huh? So send me some beats, dog. Oh yeah, yeah, send for sure. Beats. And I'm yeah, we gonna hook you up. Man. We gonna, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna do that. Maybe Absolutely, man. Uh, maybe we can, uh, you know, build something. I don't know. Maybe I send you something, and you gonna add something on it. And I'm gonna be like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, that's gonna oh. happen. But yeah, man, it was an honor having yeah, you yeah, on the yeah, show. Yeah. It was an honor having you here, and uh, you know we love you over here, man. You family, you know what I mean. The Shiznit always will welcome you back anytime, sir. Happy birthday Thank once you. again, and God bless you, sir. God bless. Thank you, you so much. Absolutely, man. Y'all be you. good, man. Y'all stay crispy, man. Stay tapped in. Oh yeah, with me, man. Whatever you got for me, man. I got y'all, man. Don't even hesitate. Hit me up for sure. We Thanks love so you over here, man. The Shiznit oh, Talent oh, TV. Y'all heard it first. Greatness on display. With my man Mo Egger, man, it's all the way up. We're getting stuck in the hemisphere, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all go check him out on all his platforms. Go get his music. Go get his merch. 
It's all up, ladies and gentlemen. I love you, my brother. We'll see you next time. It's all up. On any Instagram, right, Ager? On anyone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Huh? Show. On the Instagram. Yeah, yeah IG. No Ager. Yeah. All Absolutely. Right. Love you, man. Right. Take care. God bless. Thank Prosperity in 2023 for you, man. That's love. I mean, yeah, that's it. All right. Absolutely. Peace, love, and respect, man. Salute. One. Absolutely. Another great and classic show, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all heard it first right here on the She Is Knit Talent TV. Man, we had a legend up in the house, a living legend that is. Man, Mo Egger, man. Hey, y'all go check him out on all his platforms. What go a do the journey. Damn thing, you know? Man, a lovely journey he had, man, in this game and his music, and he's still pushing the music hard. So, yeah, we're oh. going to extend that arm of love out to him and help push his music. You know what I mean? Yes, Play sir. it over here, you know? Mm-hmm. Wow. Great, great huh? individual. Man. It's a great individual, great person, you know, Absolutely. talented, smart, business-wise. Entrepreneur, man, he's mm -hmm. everything, man. So it was damn but a pleasure to have him on the Chisney for show. Man, absolutely, Chisney. man. Wow. Thank you, Don, again. I salute you, sister. Absolutely. Nothing but love Don and respect. Lopez. Peace. Thank you. Thank you. Salute, Don Lopez. Mucho more. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. It's on and popping, y'all. It's on and popping. Yep. Tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. It's going up again. Y'all already know what to do. Is your talent boo-boo or is it the she is me yet? Oh, man, we got my main man. Ooh, do y'all want? I'm going to let Stilo let y'all know who's coming in tomorrow. Who coming in, Stilo? All right, everybody. We got Mr. Sabata the Ghost coming in tomorrow, man. So stay tuned. It's going to be another good one right here on the She is Nick Talent TV. You already know how we do that. What's that, Blue? Mr. Is Sabata. it boo boo or is it the she is me yet? Absolutely, ladies and gentlemen. We got Sapata, the ghost, coming in tomorrow. It's hype up the show with us. It's going down. You know what I'm saying? Uh, pushing the line of respect on Thursday. So I need everybody at the sound of my voice. Make sure y'all come through tomorrow. It's going down, 7 p.m. You already know the uh, same talent channel, same talent time, as Miss C Note say. Uh, so we're gonna get ready to get on up out of here, y'all. Um, any last words for you, uh, Miss uh, C Note, since we got you just, back real quick? Just much respect, much love, and as always, stay safe. Absolutely, Stilo Beats. Otherwise, yes, sir. Same thing, man. Much love, much respect. Uh, keep God first, man. Just keep it pushing. Man, you know you better keep God first. That's the ultimate plan. That's the ultimate duty. That's what we calling out for everybody to do going forward in the hip-hop industry. Put God in your life. Start reconstructing from the inside out, like my man was saying. It starts within. And so with that being said, I need everybody to stay rooted in love. Stay rooted in truth. Stay rooted in faith. Because even if you're going through some kind of darkness, you can go through that darkness and come out on the other side a shining light, and that's greatness. God's love, greatness on display, a life of victory every day for everybody. Peace, love, and respect. We'll see y'all tomorrow. We got Zapata, the ghost coming through. Lock in with us. We out.